Today, I'm going to show you how to make Christmas tree ornaments. Several different patterns. There are 10 different ones in the download. I'm going to give you a link to. And I'm going to make several of them, give you some tips on making these Christmas tree ornaments for yourself. Let's get started. It's the time of year when I'm gearing up for the last quarter. In fact, I'm in the last quarter. It's early October, but I've got to get ready for Christmas. I just put out all the Christmas orchard dice I have on hand, and as I was looking through what I have, I thought I could use a few more Christmas ornaments. So I found this. These are from Steve Good. There's 10 Christmas ornaments here. These are good size ornaments, and they're made out of quarter inch thick material. There's one of them. And so what I did is I prepped some stock down to quarter inch and the length and width of the pattern to fit on each one of those. When I need thin stock and it's not available at my book of heart to do it, I start with full quarter material and resaw it on my table saw. I use a zero clearance insert with a splitter and make the cut in several passes on each edge, making sure to flip the board and thread so that the same surface always faces the fence. Then I complete the task at the thickness planer. The table saw leaves a rough surface and the top and bottom of the board usually need a tiny bit removed as well. I use a caliper to check for final thickness of 0.25 inches. I'm going to uh, stack cut these. I'll probably make two or three of each one. I'm not going to make all ten of the ornaments. This is how I set up for stack cutting. I've got three blanks here. I'll take some blue painter's tape and put a strip across the top, and then I'll do the same at the bottom. I want to keep the three pieces aligned and prevent them from shifting while I'm cutting at the scroll saw. Next, I rolled out some double-sided scroll saw tape and attached it to the top of the stack. Then I flipped the stack so I could cut the tape to width and length with my utility knife. I flipped the stack over again, pried up a corner with the utility knife, then peeled off the backing. I trimmed the pattern slightly, then placed it on top of the tape and smoothed it out for a good bond. The first two patterns I prepped were a Christmas tree and a snowflake. I need to go over to the drill press to drill a hole to top for hanging the ornament, plus the pilot holes for the interior cuts. I have a number five Pegasus modified geometry blade in the saw because that's what I was using last but that size will be fine for the stack of two nativity scene ornaments. I determine blade size to use by taking in, into consideration the thickness of the wood, the hardness of the wood, and the complexity of the pattern I'm cutting. If you'd like more information on this, I left a link to my video on the subject on the screen and in the description. I started cutting with the star near the top of the ornament. Through experience, I have found a good way to cut these and to have nice sharp points on the star. After threading the blade through the pilot hole, I cut along one of the lines to the place where it ends at a point. Rather than trying to make that ridiculously sharp turn to form a point, I back the blade up to the pilot hole and then I cut along the next line until I reach the same point. The waste piece usually pops out, giving me plenty of room to maneuver back to the center of the star where I start cutting the next segment of the star in the same manner as I did the first one, and so on until all the points have been cut and the star is complete. The figures of Joseph, the baby Jesus in the manger, and Mary are relatively large and easy to cut for someone like me with thousands of hours of experience cutting on the scroll saw. I believe they are simple enough that even a novice on the scroll saw should be able to cut them without much difficulty. I recommend cutting right on the lines for each of these, but it doesn't matter what order you cut these in, and I don't have any more cutting tips for these since they're relatively simple shapes. With all the interior cuts done, I can move on to the exterior cut around the perimeter. I started at the bottom because it had a point, and because of that, I know when I come around the other side and complete the cut, it will be completed at this point. This ensures a nice, sharp point. Perhaps the only difficult part of this cut for a novice will be at the top of the ornament. The circular shape is met by a small circle that encompasses the hole for hanging the ornament. Where the two circles meet, you have to make a very sharp turn. This is doable if you cut to the meeting point, back off on the blade slightly so it's no longer cutting, rotate the workpiece to the new direction you want to cut, and then start cutting again. Completing the exterior cut meant cutting through the blue painter's tape. 
Then the first thing I did was to pull off the pattern with the scroll saw tape. Now I was left with the blue painter's tape on top of the top ornament and on the bottom of the bottom ornament. The blue tape is not difficult to peel off, but it isn't removed in one piece like the scroll saw tape. It took a short time to remove the painter's tape, but it was still a time saver because I stack cut two ornaments in the same time it would have taken for one. I'm replacing the number 5 with a number 9 Pegasus Modified Geometry Blade because the next series of cuts will be on stacks of 3 rather than just 2 half inch blanks. A number 7 would work, but the shapes aren't that complex and the number 9 blade can make them faster than a number 7. Since I'm making these to sell, any way I can reduce production time means cutting costs. The snowflake has a lot of curves, but since it's so large the turns won't require a smaller blade. I cut a similar but much smaller pattern recently, and so I know just how to approach this one for efficient and accurate cutting. From the pilot hole I cut down one of the longer lines, then kept following it around the curve at the end. This was not a tight turn, so the number 9 blade could easily make it. For now, I ignored the cuts off the side of this main branch. When I came to the large middle section, I made another easy turn to cut along another long side of the snowflake. Once again, I made the turn at the end and followed the line back to the middle. I kept doing this all the way around until I was able to remove a sort of star-shaped piece of waste from the middle. Now I'll go back and make the rest of those cuts. I looked at the remaining part as if the long shapes were tree trunks and the shapes coming off them were branches and leaves. It may not be a great analogy, but it works with my way of looking at this shape. There was plenty of maneuvering room with all that waste removed, so it made attacking the shapes easier than if I'd followed the line in one continuous cut. If you look at those shapes like leaves, you'll see that they attach to the branch from one direction on one side and the opposite direction on the other side. Starting each of the cuts from an empty space made it much easier to have the blade aligned correctly when beginning each cut. Completing the snowflake was just a matter of performing this operation many times. The next ornament features a Christmas tree, but I would describe it as more stylistic than realistic. I started with the star above the tree and I used the same techniques cutting it as I did with the nativity scene ornament. The difference is that the star on this ornament is smaller and it has many more points on it. It required a lot of patience to make because of these two factors. The branches of the tree all ended in sharp points and very tight angles. The easiest way to approach these was to cut down one of the lines to the point, then back the blade up to the waist space. From there I cut along the next line until the blade met the point of the previous cut. The waist was pulled off by the blade and I moved on to the next pair of lines until the tree was completed. Several of the ornaments contain words such as joy, peace, or noel. <laughs> the last root reminds me of something from my childhood. I grew up in Chicago and at the holiday time of the year my father would often say, Noel, take the bus. Throughout the year he would say that the Chicago Transit Authority needed to change their slogan for the rapid transit system to go like hell on the L. I make a lot of scroll saw patterns that contain words and so I have a lot of practice cutting letters from wood. For most patterns I cut right on the line but letters are an exception. For those I cut on the inside of the line. The reason is that the letters are spaced closely together except for spaces in between words. You don't want letters to touch, so you want to ensure they don't do that by cutting on the inside of the line. You need to be especially careful when cutting letters like O. The two sides of the O need to be close together for the letter to look right, but if you get the two parts too close together, the center can fall out and ruin the look of that piece. Sometimes a poorly cut letter can ruin the entire project. So it's good to get in the habit of cutting letters very carefully. These are just four of the ten ornaments included in the download, and the tips I've given should help you to make any of them that you choose. If you don't have access to quarter in stock, you may want to watch my full video on resawing next. I'll leave a link to it on the screen and in the description.